and welcome to Three of Six. And in this requested video, I'm going to go through the menstrual cycle, different forms of contraceptives, so a um, combined oral contraceptive, the progesterone only pills, their mechanisms of action, and what actually is a missed pill. Now, this particular section can be a bit tricky to get your head around, but hopefully after this video, things will may make a lot more sense. So let's take it back to basics and learn about the menstrual cycle. And this is a really condensed, simplified version of what the menstrual cycle is. So the menstrual cycle is the day a woman has her period, the first day she has her period, up until all the way the day before her next period is due. That is the menstrual cycle. And as we know, it's controlled by different hormones. So day one, day one when she first gets her period, there's blood, there's cramping, there's pain. It's a very, very delightful time. There could even be mood swings. It's a wonderful time of the month. That's day one. Now, for different women, their cycle lasts different amounts of days, but for argument's sake, let's take a cycle as 28 days. Because typically, for each woman, it's around the 28 day mark, but it can vary, can differ. So that was day one, the bloodshed, the beautiful part. Then midway through the cycle, so around day 14, that's when the hormone, the follicle stimulating hormone, is secreted from the pituitary gland. So pituitary gland secreting out this follicle stimulating hormone, otherwise known as FSH. And FSH does two things. It causes an egg to mature in the ovaries. So we have the ovaries, we have the, um, the fallopian tube, and then we have the uterus. So it causes an egg to start maturing in the ovaries. FSH also stimulates the ovaries to release the hormone estrogen. So with FSH, we have the pituitary gland secreting FSH. FSH causes the eggs to mature and it stimulates the ovaries to release estrogen. Now, when estrogen comes along, it says, FSH, you can go and sit back down, estrogen is here. So it stops FSH from being produced. And the reason why it does that is that only one egg will mature in a cycle at a time. This will then stimulate the pituitary gland to release our new friend, our luteinizing hormone, otherwise known as LH. So you've got your pituitary gland releasing FSH. In turn, estrogen comes back, says FSH, sit back down, I'm now here. This then stimulates um, the pituitary gland to then release our luteinizing hormone. What does luteinizing hormone do, or LH? This then triggers ovulation. So ovulation, the release of the eggs from the ovaries and traveling down the fallopian tube. So LH kind of gives the go ahead to say, okay, eggs, you're ready to go on your journey now. So it goes down, down the fallopian tube and into, well, only one, sorry, um, only one egg will be up. Go down into the fallopian tube and down into our uterus. So whilst this is all happening, um, in the uterus, progesterone, it will help the womb to start preparing for possible implantation. So the walls of the uterus start to become thicker, okay? Now, if an egg comes down into the uterus and it's fertilized, then hey, baby time. If that doesn't happen though, if pregnancy doesn't occur, there's no fertilization, the egg will be reabsorbed back into the body, the levels of estrogen progesterone will then decrease, and the walls start to break down again. And then you've got the beautiful blood coming out again. And then the whole cycle starts again. Now moving on to the combined hormonal contraceptives, and these come in various forms. You have pills, um, transdermal patches, vaginal rings, but we're going to focus on pills, and it comes in two main types, monophasic and phasic. If you do want more information on the differences between the two, then do check out my genito urinary system video, where I do cover in more detail. I will include the link in one of these two corners, I can't remember which one it is, but the link will be there, so do check that out if you want more information. Now, when it comes to combined or, um, oral contraceptives and progesterone only pills, their main mechanisms are, well, there's three main mechanisms. One is to actually inhibit ovulation. Another is to have changes in the actual cervical mucus. And the other is to inhibit sperm penetration. So the way that the combined hormonal contraceptives work is they, again, going into layman's, de layman's terms and simplifying it, it suppresses the synthesis and the secretion of FSH. So it's kind of a domino effect because if FSH isn't released, then in turn, estrogen won't be released. In turn, LH won't be released. 
And if that's not released, then you're not going to have any ovulation because there will be no um, of the ovarian follicles. They won't develop. So there will be no ovulation. So it's like a domino effect. You stop FSH. There's no estrogen. There's no LH. So there's no um, there's no ovulation. Now let's talk about missed pills. So say you take your pill at 10 a.m. every single day. So Monday, 10 a.m., you take your pill. Tuesday, 10 a.m., oops, you've forgotten to take your pill. Wednesday, it's now 8 a.m., and you think, oh yeah, I forgot to take my pill yesterday. Well, because it's still up to 24 hours, in this, in this instance, take the pill at 8 a.m., and then take it at 10 a.m. as you usually would. Even though you're taking two pills on the same day, it's absolutely fine. You would continue taking the rest of your pills the rest of the days as you normally would, no further action needs taken. But now let's say Monday 10 a.m. you take a pill, Tuesday 10 a.m. you forget, Wednesday 10 a.m. you forget, it's now Thursday, it's 11 a.m. and it's been more than 48 hours. Well in this instance then the patient would be at risk of pregnancy. So must take the pill straight away, don't worry about those early mistoses, just take it straight away. Additional barrier methods, for example, like condoms, will need to be used for the next seven days. And in this instance, the patient would need an emergency contraception as well. It's also worth noting that emergency, um, emergency contraception is recommended if two or more of combined oral contraceptive pills are missed, especially from the first seven tablets in a packet, and if unprotected intercourse has occurred since finishing the last packet. You need to give them the emergency contraception. It's also worth noting that if there are more than seven days worth of pills left in your packet after the last missed pill, take your pill free period as you usually would. So for example, um, say you missed a couple pills, but actually your next pill free period isn't until another two weeks time, continue taking it and then have your pill free period in those two weeks when you're due to. But if you have less than seven days worth, then don't worry about that pill-free period. So say, for example, it's Tuesday and Friday is when you're meant to start your pill-free period, but actually you missed a couple doses, then on that Friday, start the next packet and continue taking it from there. So you're actually going to miss out, for that particular month, you're going to miss out the pill-free period. Now let's move on to the intrauterine device. And actually, Researchers still aren't fully sure on the intrauterine device's mechanism of action. Essentially, they know it prevents fertilization, but they're still not entirely sure on its full mechanism of action. What they think it is, though, is that the uterine device, it being in the uterine cavity, that then creates a local inflammatory reaction. And it's thought that because of this inflammatory reaction, it's what prevents sperm from actually reaching the fallopian tubes. In addition, you've got being the copper uterine devices. Copper uterine devices, they release copper inside the uterus and in the fallopian tubes, and then this is thought to then increase those, the debilitating effect of sperm. Let's talk about progesterone-only pills. So as mentioned before, they inhibit ovulation, they cause alterations in the um, mucus of the cervix, and they um, prevent the sperm from being able to penetrate. Now, you've got your older types of progesterone-only pills, and you've got your newer types. So your older types are, for example, levonorgestrel, norethisterone. Your newer type is your desogestrel. And actually, when it comes to missed pills, there is a difference between the two. So if you missed one of the older style um, progesterone-only pills, well, if you're more than three hours late of taking it, so altogether it's been 27 hours since you had your last pill, that's when protection fails. So as an example, it's Monday, 10 a.m., taking the pill. It's Tuesday, 1 p.m., so it's been three hours since you were meant to take it, because you are meant to take it at Tuesday, 10 a.m. It's been more than three hours since you were meant to take it. Altogether, it's been 27 hours since you had your last dose, which was Monday, 10 a.m. That's now classified as a missed pill. But if it's a missed pill for desogestrol, actually there's a bigger gap, there's, a, there's, a, there's an increased um, leeway. So Monday, 10 a.m., you take your pill. Tuesday, 10 a.m., you forget. It's now Tuesday, 11 p.m., you think, oh yeah, I forgot to take my pill. 
this would now be missed pill because it's been more than 12 hours since you were meant to take it at Tuesday 10 a.m. Altogether, it's been more than 36 hours since that last pill on Monday 10 a.m. was taken. So in this case, when it comes to desgestural, that's then a missed pill. Protection then, that immediately fails. So in these instances, a patient can continue taking their pill each day. They will need to avoid sex or use extra um, contraceptions, for example, condoms for the next 48 hours until the progesterone only pill starts to become effective again. However, if they have unprotected sex in that time, after the missed pill, or in 48 hours that follow that, then you can give an emergency contraceptive. With regard to emergency contraceptives, so we've got Levonel or Levonogestrel, Levonel being the brand, or we've got Ella one being the brand for Ulipristal Acetate. Levonogestrel can be taken within 72 hours of unprotected um, sexual intercourse, and ulipristal acetate can be taken within 120 hours of unprotected sexual intercourse. Again, if you want more information on that, do check out my genitourinary um, video where I do cover it in more detail. With regards to um, emergency contraceptives, we've got levonogestrel, which comes as the brand Levonel, or ulipristal acetate, which comes as the brand Ella one um, Levonogestrel can be taken within 72 hours of unprotected sexual intercourse, um, a ulipristal acetate can be taken within 120 hours of unprotected sexual intercourse. If you want further information on that, then please do check out my genitourinary um, system video because I do cover it in more detail there. I do hope you found this video useful and you understand Miss Pills a bit better now. And if you did like it, why not give it a thumbs up? Subscribe, do share, do also visit my Facebook, Instagram and Twitter page. And until next time, the very best of luck with your revision and happy revising.